to get the first hit. Kinetic Dread with the smart stuff. Wow, not blocking the last hit of that string. Cyclone. Cyclone, are you home? Very nice, very nice. Gonna pop him up. Okay, kiss. Oh, let's go. Hard knockdown. Another this setup. I love it, I love it. Very beautiful stuff from this man's fucking warrior predator. But you know, handsome Quan Chi right now, keeping it nice and simple. You see what I mean. Good block, good block. So with punish! Give him hell! Yup, power up. Wow! Oh, gonna drop the combo. No, not like this! Cyclone doesn't need meter. If you guys really pay attention, Cyclone doesn't need meter. This man plays so with the futsas. The competition to win the favor of the gods will test even the mightiest warriors. Prove yourselves worthy by defeating your enemies and making sacrifices to the gods. Begin. this disgrace. have intervened.
The gods have chosen. be shunned by the elders. Sensei tab, of course, here. We'll see the set of tools here under Extended. Quick overview of everything we're seeing here. So, of course, up top we have our set origin options, which this is really only used in object mode. So, if I were to press tab to go back into object mode, we have origin to cursor, which, as we talked about before, the origin is a little orange dot in the middle of an object. It's what the object rotates, scales around, etc. So, if I were to say right click and move my cursor over here somewhere, and under set origin, click origin to cursor, and that's going to move the origin point of this selected object, or if I had a bunch of objects, to that point. So now if I press R to rotate, it's going to rotate around the origin there. And so I could even move my cursor over here, and the object is going to scale, rotate, etc., around that point. Under here we have origin to object, which basically means it's going to move the origin point back to the center of that selected object. So if I were to click that, then that goes back there. So for instance, if I double right click here and add a monkey, and say we moved our 3D cursor over here, and we said origin to cursor, and so now this monkey's origin point is over here. If I were to click origin to object, it's going to put it back to that object. So the reset selected, all that will do is reset the rotation of an object. Say I were you know, doing some tests with some object and I don't know, I, I had rotated it in some weird way that I didn't like, I can come here and press reset selected. So the same with this cube here, I can come here and press reset selected. The little sliver in between set origin and this cube icon here, this will disable 3D cursor snapping. So the 3D cursor 
is of course the little lifesavery looking thing that moves when we right click our mouse. And so by default in Sensei Format, if we drop that cursor over an object, it will snap to that object's origin point. Or if we hold Alt and right click, it'll snap to some face, vertex point, or edge of the object. But if you want to disable that, you can always click this. So it's enabled by default. So when you click it down, that means, okay, it's no longer in use. And now wherever you let go of the 3D cursor, it will drop wherever you let go of it. And then of course, this little icon here, we talked about how we can move the origin point of an object around. This moves whatever you have selected to your 3D cursor. So if I were to right click my 3D cursor over here, click this button, then I have that cube selected and it will move there. So if I press G, move that back, and shift select these and press that again, it will move whatever I had selected to the position of my 3D cursor. So this kind of stuff is all about origin points and snapping and cursory type stuff that if you can get a handle on it early on, can really save you some time down the road. Down here we have our mirroring, cloning, parenting, and joining and separating tools. So if I were to say press one to go in the front view and maybe move this over here, rotate this monkey or something, maybe duplicate this a few times. Here we can mirror our selection on whatever axis point that we want to mirror it. So if I were to press B to do a border select and select all these things, I could press X mirror and that would mirror that. I can in a sense cock this gun, that's kind of how I think about it, by clicking it, it will say clone there. And then if we were to press X again, we have cloned this selection. Or if we were to set it to clone and then press Z, we could do it like that as well. So this is just some quick tools for doing that sort of thing. We talked about parenting. That allows us to control a bunch of objects with one object. So say I wanted to parent these monkeys to this cube here. I could shift select these two monkeys and then finally select the object that I want to be the parent, which would be this cube. So shift select that then press parent and now these two monkeys are the children of this cube and if I click on the cube I can press G to grab, S to scale, R to rotate, whatever and these guys are going to follow suit. Meanwhile I still have the ability to individually edit them and do things to them and then when I go back to clicking on the parent object we're gonna have control there. So you can always tell what object has been made a child of something by this little X that will pop up when you click on an object. If you see the X there, it means you can get rid of that child-parent relationship for that object. So we could click that, and now if we press G to move this cube around, this one that we remove the relationship from is no longer falling. Parenting is kind of a more sophisticated way that gives you more control of just this simple joining or separating. So. If I were to say instead of parent all these, just shift select all of them and then press the join button, they've now merged into one single mesh. You can see they all have one origin point and if we click off them and then click on again, they all get selected because they are not they anymore to speak. They are one mesh object now. So if we were to press tab to go into edit mode, we can edit all of this because it's all one thing now. That's what the join does tab to go back into object mode and of course if we want to go back to having these as separate objects we can press separate so below that we have our bevel button and we're going to go uh, much more over using this bevel button along with bevel tools in another video but basically this adds us a bevel modifier and some smoothing onto an object because the bevel modifier is really really common to use and we can then apply the effects of that bevel modifier and you can see it shows up over here once we press that or we can press this little x to get rid of it so if we don't want it anymore we press x and then it would be gone and then we can of course change our shading to smooth or flat right here below this we have snap to grid so if i were to press one to go in front view if we press this button this does the same thing as this little button right here this just turns on grid snapping so now with this selected or that selected you can press either one and you press g to grab then your object is going to snap to the grid however it only snaps the origin point of the object to the grid which isn't exactly useful if we're trying to use the grid itself to space things that's why we have this snap to grid button. So if we press this, whatever you have selected will be made flush with the closest 
vertical line as well as the bottom horizontal line. And then now, so if we were to duplicate this, we have tight control over grid spacing to actually be able to use the increments on the grid. This actually works with a large selection as well. So if I were to press B to do a quarter select, maybe select all these, and then I were to press snap to grid, notice that the all, all of these items now become flush with the grid so that we can use this to you know, actually do something. And then of course we can disable it right there. So that's about all the overviewing we're going to be doing of this basic builder menu. We'll be getting into the shape tools, dimensions, and physics control buttons a little later. So now back to the extended tools. First I'm gonna tap A to select everything, press X to delete it all, Shift C to recenter my cursor, and then I'm just gonna press Shift A and under mesh, F cube, press Alt and tap my middle mouse button, which zooms me in on whatever I have selected there. And press tab to go back into edit mode. Here are our mesh tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my 3D cursor snapping back on here. So we've gone over these basic tools. If we click this basic button here, these are the basic kind of G to grab, R to rotate, S to scale which you can activate with these buttons, which is nice to be able to see this when you're just, you know, getting used to Blender. So we can extrude like this, which since we actually have every face of this selected, it, it extruded weird. So I'll press Control Z to undo that. Or if we were to do an individual extrude, we'll of course extrude each face uh, out in its own direction there. And then, you know, subdivide, uh, etc. So we've gone over these as well as the Show Helpful Tips button, which hopefully at, at this point, you've got most of the stuff memorized. But over here in our extended tools, we've got two set of options going on here. We've got these immediate tools here, and then we have sub menus of tools down here. So if we were to click on this one, these are our vertex tools, these are our edge tools, our face tools, and this option is for cleanup. So we're going to save these cleanup options for another video and we're also going to be focusing on the knife tool in another video as well. So first of all, if you want to close any of these bottom sub menus here, a quick way to do that is just to click on basic and then you can click back to extended. So I'm going to press tab, go into object mode, X to delete all that, shift A and add another cube, press tab to go back to edit mode. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my full screen button here so we've got more room to work with. We can use the knife tool by either clicking on it or by pressing K. Down here, while we're using the knife tool, you'll notice a lot of information here about different options. So you may wanna check these out and you know try each of these things. With the knife tool, we can click anywhere on a mesh, either on an edge, a vertex point, or just anywhere on a random face and make these cuts. When we are done making a cut, we can either press space to confirm or we can right click or double click, which will finish that cut and you can actually move around and start another cut if you wanted to. When you're finished making with all your various cuts, you can just tap space, which confirms that. And now you've cut this mesh. So if I were to tap space for face selection and then select these faces here, I can press E to extrude. And so I've got this mesh shot like this. Now there's an incredible amount of stuff we can do with the knife tool. That's why we're gonna really uh, save it for another video to get into it. But on to the bin tool. The bin tool is an organic way of bending your mesh. It's really cool for kind of like quick on the fly adjustments to things. If you're looking for a more complete control over doing something like that, I would recommend using the simple deform modifier. But for kind of just, you know, quick on the fly adjustments, we can use this bend tool. If I were to select a face I wanted to bend, say this top face here, press this bend mesh, you'll see it bending horizontally and how I move it up and down vertically. The bending is actually going on relative to where our 3D cursor is. So if I were to right click and move my 3D cursor over here, and then press the spin mesh tool again. Notice now that it's acting as though it's arcing over the position of the 3D cursor there. Now obviously the more mesh that there is for this tool to work with, the kind of cleaner the results are gonna be. So if I were to press Control Z a few times and then tap A to select everything and then tap W three or four times so we've got a lot more subdivision in here. I'll make sure I just select this top group of faces here rather than the whole thing otherwise it's just going to be trying to bend the whole thing simultaneously and we enable proportional editing now if we try to bend mesh this is going to be give us a lot more interesting results 
we can actually scroll up and scroll down to increase or decrease the size of the proportional editing. And the, you know, this makes using this tool a lot more interesting. So yeah, there's you know something for you to uh, play around with. Next, we have the bisect mesh tool. Regardless of how complicated a mesh is, this will cut it in half samurai style. One thing to point out is that if when you're using the bisect mesh tool, you have to have an area selected. So you have to either press A to select everything or just select the area where you want the cut to go. So if we were to click this and then click and hold our mouse down, we can see this line show up. And this line is showing where the segments will take place once we let go. So if we were to let go here, then this would bisect all the way through this mesh. We can either double tap space, which brings up our operator options, or if you prefer, you can click this little plus tab to bring up the M here. Then we have some options such as fill here. And what this fill does is actually fills the inside of this cut, which you can't really see because both sides are still here, but we can actually get rid of either the top or the bottom part. And then we just have this as though it were really kind of Fruit Ninja styled, you know, sliced straight through. So if we keep these and then we press the bisect mesh again and click and then drag the cut somewhere. And of course I forgot to select the whole thing again because it will only do the cut where your selection is. So we'll just press Control Z, don't do that. Tap A to select everything. Press bisect mesh. And we can do something like this. And there it is, cut in half. We could change which half you know is sliced so that's kind of a cool tool but typically I prefer to use the knife tool to do this because the knife tool has an option which lets you cut straight through and the advantage with the knife tool is you can be a lot more precise about where you want the cut to go you don't have to pre-select anything so for instance if I were to click on the knife tool Notice in the options down here, the option to cut through, which is off, but if you press Z, you can change it to on, so I'll press Z, which turns cut through on. And the knife tool does a lot of nice, you know, snapping things, so you can get really precise results. So if I, say I wanted to cut to go, you know, straight through here, I could just click, finish that cut, tap space to confirm, and now I've got this cut, you know, all the way through here. It doesn't have the snazzy other little effects, of the bisect mesh, but overall I find it to be a lot more functional. The collapse selected button is nice. It will just merge whatever faces, edges, vertex points, whatever, into a single point. So if I were to say select a few faces here, and press collapse selected, these will all be selected into a single point. Likewise, if I were to just say maybe shift select some vertex points, press collapse selected these will all be collapsed into a single point i could even press a to select everything press collapse selected and you guess it we get a single vertex point now so i can press say e to extrude this extrude that tap a to select all that tap f to create a face for that press e to extrude i'm gonna go ahead and close my operator menu there because it's getting on my nerves slide selected what this will do is allow you to slide either a face, edge, or selection of vertex points along the mesh. So for instance, say I selected this vertex point here and I wanted to move it and let me come down here and turn off uh, proportional editing. So say I wanted to move it, but I didn't want to just, you know, kind of eyeball it. The slide selected allows you to slide mesh parallel to the edges and faces it already belongs to. So I could move this vertex point down along any one of these lines by pressing slide selected. And you'll see that kind of little yellow line showing us where the line that it's trailing is and we can just kind of move it you know along those lines if we want the hotkey for this is just gg since we're already using g to grab things it's nice to just know we can quickly double tap g to be able to slide it along the mesh it belongs to and this gets to be a lot more useful the more complicated your mesh is and then finally we have the shrink Batten, which we have used quite a bit, and especially in our object from selection video. So for instance, if I were to click this face here and then shift, select these faces around here and press shift D to create an object from selection here. Now, if I were to press E to extrude this, it extrudes, but that's not really what I want to happen. So if I press control Z, 
and then press E to extrude, and then right click to cancel the movement part of that extrusion, then I click shrink batten, then these are all going to move out uniformly from this area, which is what I want. Now this comes especially in handy when you are creating clothes and assets and features and things like that for characters and objects. It's a really nice alternative to just either scaling or the default extrusion, which won't necessarily give you the results you want. So that's it for now. In the next video, we're going to be covering stuff going on in these submenus. Let's press T to bring up our tool shelf, and with this cube selected, press tab to go into edit mode. And down here in our extended tools here, we have vertex tools, edge tools, and face tools. To the far right, we have mesh cleanup tools, but we're going to save these for another video and just focus on these three branches of tools here. So over here on our vertex tools, we have bevel vertices, which this will bevel all the vertex points we haven't had selected, which right now we have all of it selected, so if we were to press bevel vertices, we'll see this line show up, and the farther we pull this line out, the more these vertex points will become beveled. If we scroll our mouse wheel up, this will increase the amount of subdivisions within the bevel. If we press Control Z and say we only selected one point, the hotkey for this is Control B for bevel, and as you'll see in all of these tools, there's the option to bevel edges as well as faces. Control B will bevel whatever you happen to have selected, depending on whatever kind of mode you're in. So if we are in a vertex selection here, and we have a vertex point selected, and we press Control B, this will bevel this vertex point. Of course, I can increase or decrease that by scrolling my mouse wheel up. And so if we were in edge selection, so I were to select this edge and press Control B, then the edge would be selected, and we can of course increase and decrease that. The Smooth Vertex tool, this basically uses the same math that the Subsurf modifier uses when it's trying to figure out how to bend all of the subdivisions together to make them smoother. Only rather than adding a modifier, it just applies that effect only to whatever vertices you happen to have selected. So for instance, if I were to shift scroll down for vertex selection, then hold C, and paint this area of vertex points here and press smooth vertices. You can see that smoothing the effects of that bevel out and it, it actually gets you know much better, which is nice. But another example would be if I were to press tab, go back into object mode, double right click over here and add a monkey. Say we added a few subsurface levels on that, press S to scale, tab to go back into edit mode, tap W to subdivide all of the actual faces in this uh, monkey mesh here. If we were then to press smooth vertex, it will smooth this out much in the way of the Cat Mule Clark math inside the subsurf modifier. So the convex hole button here will take whatever vertices you happen to have selected and create a shape around them wherein there are no concave spaces. So a concave space is an area over a surface that dips inwardly. So if you were to get rid of that, then you would have all convex shapes. So if I were to do this for this entire Suzanne monkey head, if I were to press this button with all of those vertex points selected, this generates a shape that goes around the entire head. So you can almost kind of think of it as like saran wrapping space. But where this gets really useful and really cool is if we press Control Z to undo that, is that we can actually just do this with a selection of faces. So we don't have to do it with the entire thing. So I could click a face like this, hold C to bring up my circle select brush, and you know just make some kind of weird selection or something like that, and then press this button, and it's going to fill in mesh in that gaped area. And of course, as with any tool we just use, we can always double tap space to bring up the options for that tool. So we could delete unused bits of the faces around it, join triangles, and you know various options. Of course you can get to that same menu here if you prefer to leave this open all the time. So I'll just close that back. Next up we have merge vertices. This is sometimes referred to as welding vertices in other programs. 
So if I hold shift and scroll down to get vertex selection, this will basically just bring two vertex points or more together. So if I were to say, click this point here and say I wanted to merge it with this one, I would just click this point, then shift select that point, press merge vertices, and you get this menu that pops up. And if you click at first, it will merge the last vertex point you selected to the first one and at last vice versa. So if we click at last, that vertex point that was here gets merged up there. So if I say wanted to merge these two to this one, I would uh, shift select these and then finally shift select that last one and then press this and click at last and those would be brought up to that one there. We can also just press M to bring up this menu as well. And so if we wanted to merge a bunch of these to uh, the center of a selection, we would just press this or press M and click at center and all of these vertex points are going to get merged to the point. Under that we have rip fill and rip. So I'm going to show you what rip does first because it will help make rip fill make more sense. So we can use this rip to tear apart where a selection of vertices are. So if I were to shift scroll down and then shift select some vertex points here. So if I press Z, you can see my selection a little bit better. There's these vertex points here. Press Z to go back into solid viewport shading. So if we press rip, this is literally just going to rip these vertex points apart here. So wherever we want the selection to be. So I could actually select a point, shift select some more here, shift select something like this, then press rip and that gets ripped there. So that can be pretty useful. And then of course, rip fill will do nearly the same thing, except for the area where it gets ripped, it will fill with mesh. So when I ripped these points away from the Suzanne head here, it was just full of space, but we could also fill it with mesh. So if I were to say, select a few vertices like this and press rip fill, then that rips this from here. But now these faces have been generated in between where this ripped. Press Shift A and add a simple cube here. So let's press Tab to go back into edit mode. So if we Shift scroll up to make sure we're in edge selection and I select one of these edges, I can either press this bevel edges button or of course we can just press Control B for any mode we're in to do that mode's type of beveling. So here we can bevel this edge we can scroll up to increase the amount of times it's beveled or scroll down to decrease that like this. And then I could say Alt select this edge here and then shift select these other two edges because I don't want them selected. So if I press Z to go into wireframe, you can see exactly what I wanted selected here. Z to go back into solid viewport shading. So if we press Control B again, or you could just press this bevel edges button, we can bevel this. And then of course we can you know scroll up to increase the amount of times that's beveled as well. So now it's starting to get a pretty smooth shape here where we want, which is pretty cool. Press tab to go back into edit mode. Bevel weight. This will bevel whatever edges we have selected if we are using a bevel modifier and have that modifier set to weight. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I press tab to go back into object mode and under add modifier, we can add bevel or the really fast way to do that because we use this bevel a lot is just to click it here in our menu. It will pop up here in our modifier list. If we set this to weight, then whatever edges that we bevel, if I press tab go into edit mode with this button here will be beveled. So for instance, say I only wanted this edge and this edge here to be beveled out of this whole object. Rather than the whole object being beveled at once, which is what will happen if this is on angle or none, if we have it on weight, only the edges that we select and increase this bevel weight value will get beveled. So you can see that getting beveled down there. It's kind of hard to see, so I'll press Control Z to undo that and then kind of zoom in on here and then press this again. You can see that those edges getting beveled. So if I were to like bring it real far out like that and then increase the amount of segments, Press tab to go back into object mode. You can see where this has been beveled here. So edge crease here, this will crease all the edges. This is mostly if you're using a subsurface modifier. So if I were to press 
tab to go back into object mode. And let's go ahead and press X to delete this. Let's press Shift A and add a cube. And so the long way to do this is under add modifier, click subdivision surface and then turn on smooth shading and then increase these values. Or the fast way, which we like to do in Sensei format, is just to tap W a few times on an object, which does the same thing. So if we press tab to go back into edit mode, we can either press the edge crease button here or we can press Alt E and bring our slider out and this will increase these edges. So this is nice because you can do this, you know, with the entire object, of course, or you can just do it with specific edges. So if I press Alt E and then bring this all the way back down and you'll see these lines going from having this extra orange highlight to having none and that means the edge crease is back down to zero. So you could just select a few of these that you wanted to crease and then press this edge crease button or Alt E like this and just crease those out however you wanted. And then so if we tap W a few times to increase the subsurface smoothing, we'll get you know some kind of result like that or something. I typically find that not to be a really great way to add definition to the objects you're trying to model. I think it's better to use you know loop cuts and actual adding of more mesh, but it's kind of a, a nice last resort if you've already done that with everything. Press Shift A and let's add another monkey shape because they're easy to work with. Press S scale, tap W a few times, give it some smoothing. Press tab to go back into edit mode. If I double click anywhere off this object, that will deselect everything. So there's no marked seams on this monkey head right now, but if I were to alt select this edge here, this will select this whole loop around here. So if I press Z, you can kind of see that a little better. Then I can press this mark seams button and now if I double click off here, you can see that there's this new kind of yellowish orange line which marks where this seam is. Uh, so imagine you're a taxidermist and you're trying to figure out, okay, I need to get all the skin off of this head here and be able to stretch it all flat to lay it down flat on the ground. Where are the lines that I should cut this skin off so I can lay all these things flat. And that's what you're thinking about when you're marking seams and making UV maps. So this seam we just made around the face will allow the front part of this face sort of to be cut off and stretched out flat. And then the back half of the uh, head will be done the same. But it would probably be better if we went ahead and selected a seam here for this ear here. And so we could go ahead and select the same thing over here, press Alt Shift to add to that loop selection. And we can press Mark Seams and it will mark all those at once. So if I double click to click off that, we can see those are now marked. If I press Z to go into wireframe, we can see it a bit better. So now we've told the taxidermist where we would like all the skin to be cut, we can unwrap it. So if I were to press A to select everything, and then under unwrap here, I would just want to do this basic unwrap because this will use the seams that we marked. Anything else won't use the seams, it uses this other types of special projection. But if I press unwrap, this will unwrap this. Then if I press this edit UVs button, this sends us into the image editor here, which we could have just, you know, changed manually by clicking through this menu. And so here you can see where that face was cut off and stretched flat. So sort of the taxidermist did what we asked him to. So we can either come here and switch back to 3D view or just press this go back button. That's kind of the point of seams. We'll get a lot more into that later. And of course, any seams that you don't want, you want to get rid of, you can just press clear seams. Now if we double click off of everything selected, all those seams are gone. The marked freestyle and clear freestyle, these are referring to marking freestyle seams, which these are for if you're using the freestyle render engine, which we're not going to be getting into today, but you can, you know, mark seams in the same way that you mark regular seams. So that's those, and then we already went over the edit UVs. This just quickly jumps us into the image editor, but we're currently in paint mode, so if we switch this over to view, this will then allow us to manually edit this UV map here. So I'll press go back here. So on to face tools, press tab to go into object mode, tap X to delete that, press shift A and add a basic cube, then press tab to go back into edit mode. Of course, we can bevel faces by pressing this bevel faces button. And when we do that, you see the uh, end result is kind of like a basic bevel modifier we might add. We can scroll up to increase the amount of beveling or scroll down to decrease that. So I could click to confirm that or press Control Z to undo that and you know just do a single face. So 
you know, any one of these faces here, I could either press this bevel faces and then we could shift scroll up to do a bevel like this. And once again, whatever type of mesh selection mode we happen to be in, that's the type of beveling that will be done when we press control V. So if I were to shift scroll down for vertex selection and click this point here and I press control V here, then we're gonna get that, you know, vertex type beveling. So if I were to shift scroll up, and then uh, select a few edges here and press Control B here and bring my mouse up and you know scroll that up a bit. That's the type of beveling we'll get there. So between those three different type of bevel modes, we can you know end up doing a lot of cool modeling stuff. I'll press Tab to go back into the edit mode. This solidify faces button I think is actually not really that useful. I think it's much better to use a solidify modifier. So if I were to press tab, go into object mode, X to delete that, shift A, and let's add a monkey again, S to scale, one to go into the front view here, and let's tap W a few times to give it some smoothing, tab to go back into edit mode, shift scroll down for vertex selection, and then you can either press Z so we can select through this entire thing, or you can just click this button here, which allows us to select through everything, and I'll press B to do a quarter select. And then I want to select all these points just next to this line, but not including the line. Then tap X to delete all that, and then I'll turn that back off. Here is this, you know, monkey head cut in half. And if we were to press A to select everything, we could press solidify faces. And you'll see that this gets solidified. So it's basically just extruded this out evenly. So if I were to press S to scale, you know, you can see this a bit better. So this is basically just like adding a solidify modifier, only once it's done, it's done, and you don't have any more control over it. So don't really recommend using that. So I'll press Control Z to undo that. Much better is to just, under the add modifier, just add a solidify modifier, which will do the same thing, only this will give you, you know, much more control. And once you've adjusted this, it doesn't have to stay that way. You can change this whenever you need. Press X to delete that, Shift A, let's add a basic cube again, tap go into edit mode. So if I were to tap W a couple of times to subdivide this, and then we press poke faces. Then we could say Shift scroll down for uh, vertex selection, and then under my select option here, I could do something like a checker deselect. Then if I were to press S to scale, I could, you know, scale these points out with it like this. And so that gives us, you know, kind of an interesting result there. These next three tools, the Make Edge, Face, Grid, Fill, and Fill, these tools are all combined into a single Smart Hotkey in Sensei format, which is known as Smart Fill, which also does some other things, which we do by pressing F while in edit mode. But I'll show you what each of these things do, and then I'll show you how the F key smartly will usually choose the right one whenever you need it. So I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode, press X to delete that, press shift A, and let's add a basic monkey shape here, S to scale, and let's press tab to go into edit mode here. So the make edge face, this will fill in whatever empty space where a face or an edge might go. So if I were to shift select some faces up here, press X to delete those, and then shift scroll up, go back into edge selection, and then alt select this loop of edges here. If we press make edge face, this will fill this area in. And it's nice that it filled it in for us, but it filled it in with what we call an ingon. And an ingon is basically any polygon shape, any face with more than four sides like this one. So see, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different sides to form this one shape. And sometimes you can get away with that, but typically what this will end up doing if we're not hard modeling like this, if we're say subsurface modeling, is mess up the way things look when we add smoothing to them. So if I were to press tab to go back into object mode, tap W a few times, and actually here, you know, it doesn't look too bad, but oftentimes this can cause trouble for us, so we generally like to stay away from it. So I'll press tab to go back into edit mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that subsurface modifier. An alternative to that is to use the grid fill. So if we were to press space to go into face selection, select this big end gone, tap X to delete it, and then shift scroll up for edge selection, and then alt select this, and use this grid fill instead, this grid fill more intelligently tries to actually connect each edge with each edge to give us four-sided polygons, which work way better with smoothing, UV maps, and all kinds of things. And then, of course, this fill option 
will basically do the same thing as the grid fill, only it's not so careful to try to get these faces to try to line up in the way that we want. On the other hand, it's more useful for when we have more complex holes.
So for instance, if I were to shift select all these faces here and then say maybe shift select some down like this. So say I've got kind of like a weird selection like this. GB, so my dad's one that taught me how to box. When I was two, he used to just run around with me and then throw little punches and stuff. And I used to throw punches back. Punches back. I just think, in terms of boxing, I've been doing it for so many years. I've been doing it like 15 years. So, I guess anyone that does anything for that period of time, you're gonna be extremely confident. You're gonna be outspoken on what you're doing because you know you have everything to back it up. Welcome back to the Realist channel on YouTube. There is a lot to get through today. Um, I've been traveling, but I am back home. Finally, the shadow ban is off my channel. Finally, so things are looking up. Camp starts on Monday. Finally, so we are really in a good place right now. The video with JJ, as expected never taken for granted is doing very well nearly on half a million right now um little man video is doing really well that was released during the shadow ban phase so i didn't know how much that would actually pick up but turns out we are doing okay i'm very happy about that um i'm very happy about his win congratulations to little man again he really did perform well he kept his composure and he took the guy apart round by round so shout out to him um main reason for this video today is to talk about the channel memberships that are on the way but before we get into that you know we have to pay our dues to those who support the realists and we're going to start off with smart stop smart stop self storage is my new sponsor um they have jumped on board for the tyson undercard tyson Roy jones undercard that's my next fight and they have said that they will support me through that so thank you much appreciative for that and you will see me hashtagging them and adding them on my post building up to the fight and also after the fight this is a long term partnership that you know we hope can be beneficial for the both of us so shout out to smart stop my pro team as always you know where it is already you know where the love is everyone at my pro team knows how much i appreciate the team and you guys obviously see how much I plug it and I don't plug many things that isn't mine primarily so shout out to my pro team shout out to smart stop shout out to real athletics because obviously that's the brand we've got something very interesting coming soon project 5 project V and there will be some clothing associated with that also make sure you are liking and subscribing to Ronan Cheeky. Make sure you are liking and subscribing to Real and Will's podcast. Notifications on for all of those. And yeah. Okay, cool. We've done the shout outs. Channel memberships. Channel memberships. It's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, but I've never actually dived into it and made it happen. Okay, when before I do things, I always like to really think it through and work out if it's gonna be highly beneficial for me and for my audience. If I don't feel that it's gonna be great for the audience and for myself, I won't do it. I finally thought of a way where channel memberships can work and I can provide you guys with something that is actually worth being a part of on an extra scale than just being a subscriber. I love all my subscribers, of course I do. It's the realists, we're all the realists. But now we're gonna take it to another stage now we're going to take it to another stage there's going to be two memberships available we're going to start off with the real ones membership so the real ones membership is going to be $8.99 a month okay with that you get a boxing tutorial it will be broken down step by step this is not going to be an overview this is going to be something in depth where you can actually learn how to box from the comfort of your own home office gym wherever you decide to be okay so you'll get one boxing tutorial similar to the one that i've uploaded with connor ben um that will be provided to you and also there will be a live stream members only live stream of fight night uh matches uh, and ufc matches i can honestly say i am not that good at ufc 4 yet 
for unknown streams you will see me improve and fight night i already know i'm the best so i will be playing with fans and i will be including them in my live streams which um, i'm very excited about so that's the real one membership okay that's the 899 membership now we're moving up to the elite membership known as the realist membership so you get two boxing tutorials a month so you'll be a step ahead of the real ones okay you'll be getting that additional uh, tutelage and guidance along your journey of learning the craft and the art of boxing okay and you also get what the real ones get so you'll be a part of the live stream uh the ufc and fight night live stream you also get part of being the realist you also get a step-by-step -step meal that i would eat during camp so if you're wondering why i eat during camp or how I, how I can lose weight how i maintain and how i can perform at peak performance i will be doing step-by-step -step cooking guides or uh, just like one meal that you can take home and be like cool this is something that i want to apply this is something i can eat this is going to be good for me um we've got a good connection with lockhart and Leaf as well who were the leading um nutritional company for the ufc so i will reach out to a few of the guys and see if i can get them in the video also so you can see the professionals cooking and the people that advise me from time to time so that's the two memberships that we got right there the real ones membership and the realist membership right i'm excited i feel like this is something that i can deliver to you guys this is something that i can keep up and be consistent and also something that i feel will be beneficial to you all at home all right i did uh, i did boxing camps back in the day with jj at west ham shout out to west ham that's home but not everyone can get there and you know there's a max capacity of 30 people and there's hundreds and there's thousands of them that want to learn how to box so the stuff that i was going over in person at my boxing camps that unfortunately a lot of you couldn't make due to location reasons time reasons they will be available if you become a member okay so that's all love enough of the membership talk it's now time to begin camp for my next fight which i'm very excited about very well documented mike tyson versus ray jones jr jake paul versus nate robinson badu jack versus blake i don't even know how to pronounce his last name and obviously vidal riley Marcel versus rashad Coulter. you know former ufc fighter tough guy muay thai he's he's had a background in all different disciplines so Gym. Last time I was here was with JJ before he got the victory against Logan. Now we're back here for myself. So yeah, familiar territory. Right now we're in the Wild Card Boxing Gym in LA. For those that don't know what the Wild Card Boxing Gym is, 
to the home of Manny Pacquiao is where he was made into the superstar that he is. Is that me in the mirror? Yeah, it is me in the mirror. But yeah, so just finished off a session at the Tyson Ranch and now we move to another legendary location, the wildcard boxing gym. So you can see their history in here. Pictures everywhere. Picture of Khan as we know he trained there for a while. Pac-Man's gonna be everywhere in here. Muhammad Ali. A ring in the corner. Main ring here. Jonathan Banks there. What's that in there? Legendary Jonathan, people here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Pop tarts. Where's the pop tarts? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this legend, legendary things along the wall here. And this is probably the best picture in here. Peng. But yeah. Nice. Flying high. Eight hero niggas. So the work is done for today. Yeah, and I'm tired as hell. Are we driving back right now? Yeah. I ain't trying to get nothing to eat. They're trying to get something to eat. I'm trying to hit the road. Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> We're trying to hit the road. Listen, it's the realest channel on YouTube if you don't know already. Like and subscribe. A legendary day. Met Mike Tyson. Got words of wisdom. You know, the last video done well, we was trending. You see, buddy, you got the screw face. So, right now we're signing out. And if you don't know what we do, Ben said he's riding, so we hop in.